Whether we've grown up among them or have never seen a live chicken in person, chickens have been around long enough that they are deeply ingrained in our culture. Any farm-themed toy set has a chicken on it. They're in coloring books, jokes about crossing the road, and they're the source of a child's first philosophical query about what came first. They're in nuggets at pretty much any fast food restaurant, they're the logos of corn cereal brands, and they're used as an insult for someone who has lost their nerve. With so much chicken references in our shared culture, but less and less direct experience, it's inevitable that some misconceptions about chickens start to get tossed around. I personally know that before I had a flock of my own, I thought some things about these birds that were quickly corrected once I actually spent some time with them. So with that said, let me share some common chicken misconceptions that the chickenless or chicken novice might believe, whether they know it or not. Number one, roosters only crow in the morning. It's a beautiful image, the rooster proudly throwing his head back in the pale dawn light, declaring the beginning of a new day. And while roosters gladly throw their considerable voices into the dawn chorus, it's not the only time of day that they crow. Roosters can and do crow at any time of day or night, 4 p.m., 4 a.m., midnight, midday. Honestly, I have no idea why my rooster needs to crow at bizarre points during the day, but he does. If you have a neighbor with a rooster, you might even have the roosters verbally challenging each other in a back and forth every afternoon. It's funny if you delight in that ridiculous bird, but if you house your coop near to your bedroom window, you might get more wake-up calls than you expected. Number two, chickens can't fly. I've heard people list chickens among the ostrich and the cassowary as a flightless bird, but after having my own flock, I must contest that classification. Now, chickens can't fly like sparrows or eagles, but they're not entirely land-bound like a penguin by any means. Not every breed, that is. Heavy-bodied birds like the Cornish Cross, Brahma, or Jersey Giant probably won't be able to take to the air very well, if at all, and are easily contained. Bantam breeds, Mediterranean breeds, and lighter-bodied chickens, however, can actually pro fly pretty high, especially if they can reach a high place for takeoff. If your flock makes a bad habit of soaring over fences onto the neighbor's property, you can ground them painlessly by clipping the flight feathers of one wing. Those are the long edge-of-the-wing feathers that cartoons often turn into fingers. Clipping only one side throws the chicken off balance and keeps it from maintaining a confident soar. This is not a permanent change. Once your birds molt and regrow their wings in the fall, you'll need to clip them again once they're done growing their new plumage. Number three, chickens are vegetarians. Anyone who has actually observed a free-range chicken knows that they aren't naturally vegetarians. Wild chicks and heritage chicks raised by free-range hens naturally eat a diet that is largely comprised of animal material. It's higher in the protein that they need to grow and easier for them to eat. Adult chickens voraciously seek out worms, bugs, grubs, and will eat meat happily if they find it. Number four, brown eggs are healthier than white eggs. There's been lots of different marketing schemes to make some types of eggs more valuable and therefore more pricey than others. Blue eggs were touted as being as more healthy than other eggs in the 1980s. And even now, you can easily find articles online that declare brown eggs to be healthier than white eggs for whatever reason. The actual truth is, it's the hen's diet that controls the level of healthy nutrients, omega-3s, protein, etc., that's in the egg she lays. If your birds are healthy and fed a diet that is varied and full of complex nutrition, you can rest assured that they are laying healthy eggs no matter what color they are. Number five, you need a rooster to get your hens to lay eggs. Nope! A rooster is totally unnecessary for your morning omelet. A flock of hens alone will a lay eggs without issue. If you want to have your hens hatch their own chicks, of course, that's when you need a rooster. It might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised who hasn't put that together. Number six, chickens are loud, noisy birds. Many would-be chicken keepers are confronted with city rules or HOA noise ordinances about keeping chickens. Chickens are often inferred as being too loud and too raucous to peaceably keep in a populous neighborhood, and are often forbidden. These rules boggle my mind to no end, because those same neighborhoods are allowed to keep dogs. Dogs that bark at any and all hours of the day or night. Anybody who's been around a happy flock of chickens knows that their quiet daily cooing is hardly an annoyance in comparison. No matter what breed I've kept, I found that my hens are allowed only really where they're scared or laying eggs. Number seven, chickens lay an egg in the morning year round. Left to their natural rhythms, many chickens produce eggs in the spring, summer, and early fall, and then take a break during the days with shortest daylight. Some egg-laying breeds can sometimes turn out four or five eggs a week during peak production times, but no chicken lays an egg every day of the year. Number eight, chickens are not worth keeping after two years. 
I have heard and been told several times that laying hens are only as good as their first two years. One year to grow, one year to lay eggs at peak production. The rationale is that they are used up by then and should be butchered, and that your feed would be better used by younger chickens in top form. We didn't listen to that with our flock. Our goal was long-term sustainability, not constant peak production. We didn't put supplemental lighting in the coop to make the hens keep laying year-round, and we let the birds have their rest. And as a result, my older hens have seemed to lay just as well and lay bigger eggs in their later years. I honestly don't know if there were fewer because it didn't matter. We had enough. Additionally, my older hens have been broody birds and excellent waste processors. The fact is, healthy chickens can live well past 10 years. My aunt even had one who lived all the way into the ripe old age of 15. Keep your birds as long as you want to have them. Their worth is determined by their contribution to your homestead, not some mythical expiration date. Number nine, there is one right way to do chickens. If I've done my job right with this class, I hope that I've given you a huge range of information and options when it comes to deciding what to do with your flock. While there are certainly some wrong ways to treat your birds, there is no one-size-fits-all correct way to raise your birds, no matter how impassioned a rant you read online to support a certain style. A person who totally free-ranges their flock isn't on a moral high ground, neither is the person with a totally coop-bound flock a cruel prison keeper. The best way to care for your birds is dependent on how much land you have, how many resources you have access to, and your personal philosophy for keeping these birds in the first place. Number 10. Everything about chickens online and in books is accurate and true. When I wrote the articles for InSetting's Chicken Breed Database, the thing that surprised me most was the sheer amount of wrong or contradicting information there is online. Additionally, a lot of the information I even thought to be true flew in the face of my direct experiences. Chicken forums are full of contrasting advice and stories, and different advice given on how to solve any given problem ranges in a dizzying amount. Rhode Island Reds, for example, are not supposed to be broody. Easter Eggers are supposed to be incredibly friendly. Leggerns are supposed to hate being handled and flighty to a fault. Chicks can't be successfully raised without starter ration. Australorps lay eggs year-round. You get the point I'm trying to make. So are people actively trying to misinform you about chickens? I don't think that's the case with the majority of these inconsistencies. I think the answer is really twofold. First, it lies in the fact there is just so much variation with any animal and the means of raising it. All the data points on breeds are generalities based on trends. As Caesar Milan is fond of, fond of saying, to truly understand an animal, he was talking about dogs in this case, but the same applies to chickens, you need to meet it on three different levels, as a species, as a breed, and as an individual. There is a lot of variation allowed there. The second part lies in that there's, there's also a hundred different ways to approach a problem, and sometimes there's no one right way. Sometimes the unconventional, never-mentioned method is the way that you may find out works perfectly for you and for your land. Sometimes you need to sift through everything you've read and heard and go with your gut instead. So my final admonishment is this. Always use discernment with anything you read in here, this course included. Your experience, individual birds, specific land, and personal philosophy are probably always going to be different than that of whoever wrote whatever you're reading. And you're going to continue learning and refining your technique every year.